I've just found why I had no oil circulation. I just undid the hoses one by one and gave the motor a quick start. The oil was pumping out of the engine. The pump was working fine, volumes of oil coming out. There wasn't a blockage in the hose, but there was no oil coming out of the uh, oil filter, the remote oil filter that I fitted. And uh, so I took this off and checked it. And when I was putting the hoses on the car this time, I noticed that on the top of the block for the mounting of the uh, remote oil filter, it wasn't marked in or out. And I thought, oh, well, those hoses probably have to go around a particular way. And then I thought, well, no, it doesn't really matter because an oil filler is just a pressurised container, so it doesn't matter which, which way it goes through it. <laughs> well, it turns out I was completely wrong. Some of you are rolling on the ground laughing now because you've known this for years. But in modern oil filters, and this is something I've painfully just discovered, modern oil filters, quality ones, have an anti-drain valve built into them. What this does is it stops the oil draining back out of the engine and into the sump when you turn the motor off. So that when you kick the car and start it, there's some oil to go straight through the system and to prime it, as it were. And because I had these hoses round the wrong way, I had the out going in where the in should be and vice versa, the oil was going in and closing that anti-drain valve that built into this filter. So the oil filter became a blockage switch and that's why the oil didn't go around. Uh, expensive lesson. Uh, I hope one or two of you out there were like me and didn't know there were anti-drain valves built into filters. I hope I'm not the only person, but I probably am. I also found where the water leak was that caused the overheating. Uh, I had a temporary radiator in there and the hose just wasn't on properly. So I found the causes. I know how to fix them. I'll be fitting a oil pressure uh, gauge to there. I couldn't see the factory one on the day because of the sunlight on the dash and it's just a little uh, warning light. So I'll fit a proper gauge there. I'll fit a water temperature gauge and I will engrave this with in and out so that I never have this problem again. Lesson learnt, an expensive one. Got to find an engine and swap it, but that's motor racing. Oh, and by the way, before you beat me up too much for not running uh, an auxiliary oil pressure gauge uh, as a standard feature on a racing car, consider this. Where these outlets are, if I'd connected an oil gauge there, it would have shown oil pressure because the oil was coming in and going past that point and entering the filter. So in this particular instance, an oil pressure gauge wouldn't have shown me that I had the lines round the wrong way. Um, the other thing, finding the oil filter being the blockage uh, tells me, is why the car didn't really go well. I was a bit disappointed with all the lightning I've done. And I thought, well, you know, all this work and the car didn't feel like it was even as good as the old one. Think about this, you Honda guys will know. What do you need to operate VTEC? What causes VTEC to operate? The answer is oil. Oil pressure goes up through an auxiliary switch and out through the center of the cam shaft and operates the additional loads. Um, so because I didn't have any oil pressure, when I did the, the trial run on this, I didn't have VTEC. And that also explains to me why it seemed to be just running out of breath and it was just running on the granny cam. So I'm hopeful that uh, when I get the car fixed and a new engine in it and I have oil pressure and the VTEC's working and the car's not overheating, it'll still go so fast it'll scare me shitless. Sleeper.